So the first thing we need to take care of is the sweet potatoes themselves. In this recipe, we roast the sweet potatoes. So we're increasing and bringing out the flavor of the natural sugars already in the sweet potato itself. Here's how you do it. Line a baking sheet with aluminum foil and add four sweet potatoes to the pan that have been scrubbed clean and dried. Drizzle the sweet potatoes with about a tablespoon of oil and rub them all over. Then you're gonna transfer them to a 400 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven and bake for about 50 minutes or until they're fork tender. Remove the potatoes from the oven and set them aside until they're cool enough to handle. Then you'll cut a slit down the sweet potatoes lengthwise and remove the skins. Definitely let those potatoes cool for at least 20 minutes before you try to peel the skins off. So once your potatoes are no longer steaming, we can go ahead and move on with the base. The potatoes are gonna go in a large mixing bowl along with eight tablespoons of unsalted melted butter, a half cup of light brown sugar, and a third cup of evaporated milk. This ingredient might seem a little strange to you going into a sweet potato casserole, but evaporated milk has a more concentrated milky flavor, and that translates into rich, decadent, buttery flavors in the base of the casserole. Grab yourself your handheld mixer and mix these ingredients together at medium speed until well combined. Now you're gonna crack into three large eggs in a separate bowl and give them a whisk. Add the eggs to the sweet potato mixture and mix again until combined. Lastly, you'll add in one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and a half teaspoon of salt. Mix one more time and the base of your sweet potato souffle is done. Moving on to the topping. So when I was coming up with this recipe, I wanted to find a sweet potato casserole balance for those of us who love the marshmallows and those of us who can't do it. Now I'm not trying to knock marshmallows on a sweet potato casserole. I think it definitely has its place on the Thanksgiving table. If you want that recipe, I'll link to it right around here. In comparison to a lot of other recipes out there, this one is going to be way louder in sweet potato flavor, but you're also gonna find it's a little less sweet. And now we're on to the brown sugar pecan streusel. This streusel is what makes this casserole so insanely delicious. You'll add a half cup of all-purpose flour, a half cup of light brown sugar, and a half teaspoon of salt to a medium-sized mixing bowl and whisk to combine. Now you're gonna need some cold, unsalted butter cut into cubes. I find the easiest way to cut butter into little cubes to create a streusel is to stand that butter right up on a tiny and cut it lengthwise two ways. Then you can turn it flat and make little tablespoon sized cuts all along the rest of the stick. So you'll add six tablespoons of cubed butter over the top of your flour mixture. And now you're gonna grab your pastry blender and we're gonna start cutting that butter in. The most efficient way to cut butter using a pastry blender is to use a rocking motion, taking those blades all the way to the bottom of the bowl. You're gonna repeat until the mixture no longer looks dry. And then we're gonna add the pecans. So you can buy pre-chopped pecans or you can chop the pecans yourself. I actually prefer to chop the pecans myself because you're gonna have a bit more of a rustic homemade look and I just like to see those larger chunks of pecans in there rather than perfectly uniform little robotic pieces. Just gives your souffle a little more personality. The easiest way to get those pecans mixed in is to just use your hands, mix that up, and now we're gonna top off the sweet potato base. Sprinkle that brown sugar pecan streusel all across the top, and then we're gonna transfer it to a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. Make sure that you have reduced your oven temperature. If you bake this sweet potato souffle at 400 degrees, your topping will burn. We're gonna let this bake for about 30 to 35 minutes, set it aside to cool for about 20, and then it's time to serve.